Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 383 of Love at First Scent with me, Percel Ace. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, and we have several comments already. First one goes to Pradeep, who says, good evening, did someone say sandalwood? Yes, indeed I did. We've got, uh, we're in a new month, and we've got uh, a top 10, um, and this is another one of the ones that has been long requested by lots of you. We're going to be looking at my top 10 best sandalwood perfumes. Um, I suspect this may be a little bit of a controversial list because I think people have very, very, very strong opinions on which sandalwood scents they like. But I should look at some of the other comments that have come through. Keith is here as well saying, I hope everyone is having a great day. I hope you're having a wonderful day as well, Keith. Lindsay says, not my favourite note, but I do love Serge Lutin's Santal Blanc. Uh, Sharon says, greetings from Dallas, Texas. Can't wait to talk about sandalwood. Rich is here as well. So is Christine. So is M. Snoch from Katowice. Cześć. Jura is saying hello, Mr. P. And everyone. Woozy says, a list we've wanted for a long time. I think, yes, a lot of you have wanted this one for a while. You've been very, very patient. Eric is in Texas as well. Say hello to Sharon. Uh, Bry says, we all know Santal Blush will be here. What makes you think that? Loads and loads of comments coming. Santal33 incoming, says Philippe. Uh, scent of the day, says Rich, is Cologne Offic Officinale. Um, I, I don't know whether there's a typo in there, Rich. Probably not. Monogram says, I find it fascinating that Bois d'Azile doesn't have any sandalwood in it. Um, uh, Omar says, oh boy, best sandalwood is Bleu de Sauvage. <laughs> okay. Um and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of comments coming through. I should say, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. Regardless of whether you're watching this video live or you're watching the recording, feel free to ask a comment, ask a comment, ask a question, leave a comment, and also please do consider supporting my work. Uh, you will be able to find out how you can do that by uh, looking for the link to the coffee page in the video description below. But if that's too complicated, then you can also use the YouTube Super Chat facility all um, support is very, very, very welcome and very much appreciated. And also, please, oh, I can see hearts going across my screen. That doesn't happen very often. Who's doing that? that that's okay. I didn't realize you can do that. Thank you very much for the hearts. Hearts right back at you. And if you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up as well. Anyway, uh, we should get going. Please, please, please let me know what some of your um, favorite uh, sandalwood perfumes are. Um, and I, regular viewers will know that I struggle with these sorts of lists because I tend to overthink them. Um, and, and so with, with this one, I thought, okay, let us not overthink it. Let us just look at the collection and see what are the favorite sandalwood perfumes that I have in the collection. There is a kind of a plus one, but the plus one is one that very, very sadly has been discontinued. Um, and I try as much as possible to... Rebecca's saying, I can't stop the hearts. Sorry. <laughs> I love the artifact that this video is just going to have hearts going constantly. There are lots, and there's like streamers and party hats and things going across my screen as well. That's fine. Okay, no, I thought it had stopped. I try to make these lists, I try to populate these lists with uh, scents that are currently in production, but there is a discontinued one that I would very much love to include. Rich, thank you very much. That's very, very kind. Okay, Rich is explaining Cologne Omfincinale is the latest release from Healy. Ah, I had heard about this. I've heard very good things about it. It is rather fantastic, says Rich. I'll send you a sample along with the Lesanda Modable Cologne. That's really, really kind. Thank you. Um, Frag Chai Town says the only sandalwood forward fragrance I like is Mar Olfactive's Santal Oster, an indie perfumer from uh, M.O. What, what state is M.O.? Missouri? Is that going to be Missouri? Um, Philip says, Atelier Materi Santal Blonde was a pleasant surprise to me. A wonderful sandal scent. Uh, Omar says, Chanel Egoiste and Bois d'Azil are my two favorites. Rachel is doing a, a shout out for Bois d'Azil as well. Oh, Missouri says, Fracture. So, but I can't even remember if that's what I said. Oh, my brain is gone to bits. Did I, did I say Missouri? Never mind. Never mind. It is Missouri. Okay. <clears throat> You can tell I'm putting this off. Um, let's start. I'm going to start with one that was released in 2011. And really, really bizarrely, I don't know how this happened, really bizarrely, 
2011 is very, very well represented in this list. I don't know what was going on, whether lots and lots of perfumers and brands had sandalwood on their minds, you know, towards the end of 2009 and in 2010, because I guess though that's when the 2011 scents were in development. But we've got um, we've got four 2011 scents in this list. Have I counted correctly? One, two, three, four. Yeah, which is interesting. And we're going to start with one of them. But I'm not starting with this one because it was released in 2011. I'm starting with this one because it is, without any question, the the, the quietest in the list and maybe it's going to be a little bit one of the more sort of controversial ones because a lot of people complain that although they like it, they feel it doesn't last very long. Um, let's get going. So this is number one on the list from 2011, composed by none other than Monsieur Jean-Claude Elena himself. It's Hermès Santal Massoya. I, can you see that there? You can just about make it out. Um, from the Hermès collection. A lot of people sadly think this release was a waste of time because they reckon that it it doesn't last very long. However, at the very, very un other end of the spectrum, a lot of people absolutely adore this and consider it to be one of the best sandalwood perfumes that they have ever encountered at them that they have in their collections. Um, and I, I, I rate it very, very highly as well, actually. And I think it's one of the few perfumes out there, really and truly one of the few perfumes out there um, that somehow remains true to the essence and the spirit of, of, of sandalwood oil. Now, sandalwood is, is, is an interesting material. Um, I suppose we should say, we're not going to get too technical in this episode. We should say that when we, when we talk about sandalwood, we tend to mean Santalum album, which is the Indian variety, sometimes called the Mysore variety. But of course, that has been massively, massively, massively over-harvested uh, over the years. And its usage is now very, very, very strictly limited and very strictly controlled, um, officially controlled. Um, there's all sorts of illegal black market trading in sandalwood. Uh, there's lots of crime involved in sandalwood. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, there's lots and lots of shady business going on. And, and so the amount of uh, genuine Indian Santalum album that is used in perfumery is much, 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 much lower than it was if you went back a few decades. Um, Australian sandalwood, I think I'm right in saying the particular variety uh, 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 the, 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 that is the Australian one is um, Santalum spicatum, which does have a slightly different profile. I think most people consider it to be maybe a little bit harsher, a, a, a little bit more strident, a little bit less creamy, a little bit um, sharper. But what's interesting in the sandalwood story as well is that several years ago, um, they, the, um, you know, the, the 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 proverbial they started growing Santalum album in Australia. Um, and so that created almost a sort of third variety. I mean, obviously, it was quite close to the Indian grown Santalum album, but it took on a, a sort of identity of its own. Um, and a lot of the time when you smell sandalwood in modern perfumes, assuming that they do actually contain natural sandalwood, it is probably Santalum spicatum, the Australian variety that you are smelling, but it could also be the Australian grown Santalum album and so on and so forth. Um, Woozy says they started 20 years ago. <clears throat> They've only just started maturing, which actually raises an important point as well. That the the tree, I think I'm right in saying, is, is, is kind of parasitic. Um, and so it does grow pretty quickly. Um, but you cannot use any of the sort of sandalwood oil from it. You can't use it for sandalwood oil um, until it's really, really quite established. I, I, I think I think we're sort of talking about at least a decade and maybe something in the region of 13, 14, 15 years for it to mature before you can actually extract any sandalwood oil from it. Um, but to go back to uh, Santal Masoya, Michael says, Santal Masoya disappears on me in 10 seconds. However, I've just put some on so that I can be wearing what you're describing at the same time. That's very kind. It lasts longer than 10 seconds on me. So where I was going with that little science history contextual lesson. Um, I've just got a very, very weird pop-up that's appeared on my screen. Okay, it's gone now. Fine. Didn't need to do anything. Sorry about that. 
if you get pure sandalwood oil, and if you are able to get some, a good quality, do have some in your collection. You don't need a lot as a reference. Two or three mils will be enough. And there are uh, reliable sources of it out there. If you smell it, you realize that actually what what is sold to us as sandalwood or a sandalwood olfactory profile and a lot of perfumes out there is really quite different from, from sandalwood oil. Genuine sandalwood oil is really actually quite gentle, quite creamy, quite milky. It isn't, and I've talked about this before, it isn't overly smoky or, you know, it's certainly not kind of like cigarette-like or tobacco-like or incense-like. It has a very, very subtle character. It has a very discreet character, and yet it is very, very definitely present. Um, Ashfaq says, thankfully, we now have quite a good quality sandalwood growing here in Bangladesh. It is very close to the Mysore. I didn't know that. Interesting. So watch this space. Thanks for that, Ashfaq. Um, and I think that very, very gentle, discreet character of sandalwood is best conveyed by Monsieur Jean-Claude Elena, so we come back full circle to Santal Masoya. Um, MB says, what a coincidence. I was thinking of wearing Santal Masoya today. It lasts a few hours for me and is so comforting. And you could always spray some on fabric. And so this is, th th this, this has a top note that is kind of fig-like. I think officially the brands talk about dried fruits. And yes, you know, you, you could imagine that there's maybe like dried orange peel, maybe dried lemon peel, maybe things like dried fig or or even raisins and currants and sultanas. Um, but but mostly it is that very, very gentle, discreet, very, very dignified sandalwood feel that comes across. And speaking of Hermès and the Hermès and this is another tangent, but we allow tangents on this channel. Um, have you heard about the Hermès discontinuations? It, it looks like apparently they're doing um, discontinuations en masse of several really, really beautiful perfumes. And if the authority of the sales assistant in Harrods is to be trusted, and I don't see why not, of the actual Hermès boutique uh, sales assistant, then the stories of the discontinu discontinuations are true. And apparently, Jardin Après la Mousson is going. I mean, that, that I think is just so, 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 so sad. Apparently, uh, Vanille Galante from the Hermessence is going. Uh, apparently, Brand de Réglisse is going. Um, you, you, there, is, there is a list out there. You can, you can sort of, if, if, you start, if you start looking. And oh, also, Eau de Narcisse Bleu, which isn't even that old as a scent. So if you're a fan of those, um, stock up. I mean, I, I think I think the departure of Après la Mousson is um, really, really sad. And I remember years ago, I think the first time I met Jean-Claude Elena, I'm pretty sure that was the time when he told me that he never uses synthetic sandalwood materials in his scents because, and I quote, because they stink. I think it was on that same occasion that he told me one of the reasons why he was so proud of working at Hermès. Um, is that they never discontinue perfumes. And now it seems um, they're doing a lot of them. Um, the Elena flankers of the originals are also going apparently, says Woozy. Oh, so do you mean things like um, geranium equipage and there was a rose Amazon, wasn't there? That's that's a shame, I mean, but, but, but I guess that it's, it's something that they feel they have to do. Okay, we're at nearly at the 14 minute mark and I've only talked about one perfume so far, but I have given a little bit of background and, 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 and I'm, reading, um, I'm reading your comments as well. But we need to, we need to, we need to get a move on because there's, you know, it's, it's 10 plus one. So we've started with the quietest one and now let's go back in time to the oldest one, to the one that is in the thumbnail, which is why it makes sense to, 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 to talk about it fairly soon in the broadcast. From 1926, this has to be included, um, of course, composed by Ernest Beau. It is the legendary, the gorgeous Bois des Îles from Chanel. This is the X-ray much, 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 much later, not that long ago. Of course, we, we got the Eau de Toilette. Uh, for the exclusive range, and now it's available as an EDP. They're all beautiful, but the, the extra is something really special. And I mean, Ch Chanel really, really work hard on their extras, and it feels really wrong to not be applying this on skin. Heavenly extra that it is, but there we go. I don't want to start 
contaminating my skin and being um, you know being confused by all of the smells let's just label it if you if you haven't smelt Wadazil, um you have got such a treat in store <clears throat> I know so many brand owners and creative directors and perfumers for whom this is one of their absolute favorite all-time scents, um, and, and with good reason. Um, so let's 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 have a smell. Let's have a smell. So as I say, original from 1926. Right. So this is making me think of another thing that I thought I, I would do with this broadcast. Um you know that sometimes when we do these top tens, we like to have a kind of um, a, a, a sort of tie tie the sense together with a sort of theme. And sandalwood, of course, is famously used in a lot of uh, Vedic rituals and Hindu rituals. Um, but 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 not just in that part of the world. It seems to feature a lot in uh, religious rituals uh, a, a, across the world because it does seem to have this very very meditative, calming, transporting um otherworldly sort of supernatural quality to it and i thought okay and this may be really 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 politically incorrect but i mean i'm just laughing at the fact that those hearts are still going maybe you need to refresh the page or something to make the heart stop going um this may be politically incorrect and if it is then i apologize but i'm doing it with you know with 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 good intentions but I'm picturing all of these sandalwood scents as like being being part of of a of of a kind of fictional monastery somewhere, and I I suppose it could be a Buddhist monastery. They could be Buddhist monks, but I don't I guess, I guess they don't have to be Buddhist monks. Although they probably wouldn't be Trappist monks because because the not 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 all of these not all of these guys are going to be silent. And we could imagine them we could imagine them as nuns as well in a convent. But in my head in my head they're they're monks in a monastery and and each one of them is going to sort of take on a different the, the, each of the sandals is going to take a, on a different personality so santal masoya is definitely um the quietest monk the the really really discreet one who absolutely wants to just stay in the background and just quietly get on with what he's doing um but is very very dependable and very reliable and very 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 sincere and very very honest bois d'azil bois d'azil is I suppose, I suppose maybe Bois d'Azil actually is going to be the, the, the kind of Dalai Lama monk. I think, I think the ruler of, of this monastery. Um, yes, because, because, because this scent, this scent is actually so regal and so authoritative. Um, and just so beautiful. I get a little bit speechless when 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 I smell something so beautiful. A long time ago, I think when we were doing a Chanel video, one of you watching gave me the most perfect description of Bois d'Azil, which was a kind of comparison with number five. And I wish I could remember what it was, but I remember at the time thinking, that is genius. I think we were talking about number five and number 22. And we said that number 22 obviously is this kind of super aldehydic version of number five, which feels like it's you know number five sung by this choir of angels, and I I I don't know whether the the, the comment was that Bois d'Azil is like number five with the sandalwood amped up, so the so the aldehydes are toned down, the florals are definitely there, but this is all about the sandalwood. Um, Aria says Bois d'Azil is amazing. Tom Ford's Santal Blush is a gorgeous modern take on it. Ashvark says, heating oil-rich sandalwood shavings at low temperature provides the best calming smell. Oh, I didn't know that. I can even enjoy it when I have a headache. If you haven't, please give it a try. You'll love it. I need to, I need to get some, some sandalwood chips. Um, and so this is, this is in, in terms of its olfactory profile, it is a kind of floral sandalwood. But the, the, the sandalwood note in it is just so deliciously creamy, gentle. This is, you know, this is the monk to whom you want to go with all of your problems and with just one smile and with just a, a chuckle and a giggle, like the Dalai Lama's laugh. You know, the current Dalai Lama has got the most infectious laugh. It will, it will just make everything seem okay. It will, it will just make all of your problems and your worries um, go away. Right. We really need to get a move on. Uh, number three, what did I decide would be number three? Okay, gosh, this is a beautiful one as well. These are all going to be so beautiful. So number three from 2011, it's another one of the ones from 2011. This was part of the debut trio 
from Nila Vermeer Creations, so from 2011, composed by Bertrand Duchafour. Uh, this is the, the travel size bottle. This is Trai. And again, if you haven't smelled Trai, goodness me, have you got a treat in store? Uh, I know that a lot of you have tried it. <clears throat> oh, Monoctra says, Ernest Beau famously created the sandalwood accord from scratch for Bois d'Azile. I did not know that. Thank you very much. So here we go. Trai is a scent that I don't smell enough. I don't wear enough. I should wear it more. It is just so perfect. Floating Man says Trai is nice, but a little tame for me. <gasps> really? Okay. Now Trai, Trai, I think is the monk who has appointed himself as the chef in this monastery um, because he's got a bit of a sweet tooth, but he's really, really jolly and happy and smiling all the time, um, but also very, very wise. So a wise chef, you know, the kind of chef that knows exactly what you want, what the most comforting food for you is going to be without without you even realizing it, without you asking for it. Trai, Trai is a real, real, real journey. Like so many of Nila's compositions with Bertrand du Chauffour, um, there is so much going on here. I still, I still, th I still think it's one of the best things that she's done for her brand. It's, it's got this kind of steamed milk, um, Indian ice cream, you know, kulfi type accord. It's full of spices like cardamom and cinnamon maybe even nutmeg in there, I don't know, you know, tons and tons of stuff in there. And then, and I, and I guess the two main things that come out um, is a really, really gorgeous, really romantic jasmine note. And then of course, at the end, this truly heavenly and yet so welcoming and, and embracing and warm sandalwood scent. And I remember at the time when it came out, thinking that it was a really good um, take a really good sort of homage to Garland's Samsara um, because, because of that jasmine sandalwood combo. But here, of course, we've also got the spices and we've got that milkiness, we've got that creaminess. Um, the Duchaufour it, it is so good at doing. Do you remember when he made Amaranthine for um, for Penhaligans? It is that same sort of feel. Um, Aria says, haven't tried this one, got to track it down. Yes, you really, really do. Floating Man says, Dark Oud by Montal is one of the best sandalwood solifloor perfumes I have ever got my nose on. I should smell it. Um, Santal, de, Santal de Misor would be the chef for me because that smells of food to me, says DJ. Trai is too luxurious for a Buddhist monk, says Gavin. Yes. I mean, strictly speaking, yes, you're right. So maybe this could also be the person who's in the monastery on a retreat for a couple of months. And so maybe, strictly speaking, they're not a monk but they've joined in with the monks for a few months. Maybe that's, maybe maybe it's like the visiting pastry chef who's only gonna be there for a couple of months and then will go away because you are right. It is, there's nothing, you know, there's, there's nothing celibate about this and there's nothing, there's, 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 there's no vow of poverty here at all. Um, I love the cinnamon and cardamom. Thank you, cardamom as well in Trai, says Sharon. It is, it, 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 it is just really, really, really beautiful. And as I say, I, I don't wear it enough. Uh, fourth on the list, fourth on the list, is one that I've always rated as a sort of favourite sandalwood scent, but I haven't smelt it for a while and I don't know why I don't wear it more, because I really, really do like it. And it's from 1995, from Lorenzo Villaresi. It's his uh, Sandalo, of course, composed by uh, Villaresi himself. Uh, for, for many people, this is a kind of um, sandalwood holy grail. Uh, I still think, you know, having having um, smelled lots of other things from his brand, I still think this is probably his best thing. Um, I've I've tried a few of his more recent releases, and and nothing nothing's um, really kind of you know shaken my world, if I can use that expression. Very woody sandalwood, says Rich Mitch. Yes, you're you're right, and I I think that's what I like about it. This is the kind of this is um, where can we pop that? This is sandalwood as being. Yeah, a, a, a bit more in your face now. So these share that kind of gentle creaminess in, as far as the sandalwood is concerned. Um, 
Extremely underwhelming brand overall, says Monoctra. Well, okay. Uh, Pradeep says, I prefer Etro's Sandalo, which I haven't smelled for the longest time. Now, I like this one because this is this is what a lot of, it, it kind of showcases what a lot of modern perfumes do with sandalwood, where they, they actually sort of think, okay, we know the material is gentle and milky and creamy and discreet and, and tender and heartfelt and all the rest of it, but let's actually see if we can tease out its spikier sides. And this is what this does. Um, so yes, you've got that recognizable sandalwood feel in the base, but as Rich said, or was it Gavin? No, Rich. Um, this really, really goes heavy with the woods. And I wonder if it's cedar, maybe lots and lots of isoe super, maybe some spikier woods in the base as well. But this is, this is, so this is the, 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 this is the, 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 the maybe the slightly jaded um, monk who has been in this monastery for a while and kind of just gets a little bit too easily irritated by some of the monks and their ways, but but he 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 is very 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 kind of honest and sincere at his core. He's just you just you just need to approach him carefully, okay? He's got a slightly spikier um, personality. Who's talking about creamy bananas? Yura says, Rich, did you really just say creamy banana? Where is this? I have got. Sandalo is amazing. I get a creamy, uh, oh, Etro's Sandalo is amazing. I get a creamy banana vibe from it. it. Says, well, if you get creamy banana, you get creamy banana. Um, Woozy says, I think Milky Musk is the only modern sandalwood that correctly balances the creamy with the woody. So that's from Parle Moi de Parfum. So that's, yeah, thanks for mentioning that one. Um, Alcoholic Nan says, do you enjoy DNG's Red Cap Pour Femme from the 90s, one of my most adored sandalwoods? I'd have to, I'd have to get a sample of that. I can't even remember that one uh, very well. Um, I want a scent called Creamy Banana, and Tom Ford might deliver on that, says Gavin. <laughs> yeah, you you read it here first. Um, the list can be called The Monks and Their Sandalwood, says Jen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Sandalo, and it's got a, it's got a, almost like a kind of slightly acidic or maybe kind of acetony sort of nail varnish remover, paint stripper type feel to it. It's, um, it, it's, it's kind of pleasingly, pleasingly temper tantrum-ish, or heading in the direction of a tent temper tantrum. Give us Creed original Santal, says Woozy. Hmm, yes. Less said about that, the better. And let's get to the halfway mark before we get to the half an hour mark. <clears throat> this one's already been mentioned, so let's do this one. Although this is not the bottle in which it originally came out from 2001 by none other than Mr. Christopher Sheldrake himself. And this is Serge Lutin's Santal Blanc. But I should say, this comes with a little bit of a story because I very, I, I nearly included, well, I, I think I kind of actually wanted to include Serge Lutin's Santal Majuscule. So I went to Madame Percelet's because I know that um, she has Santal Majuscule in her collection, but I was mistaken. She doesn't have it anymore because she finished it and she got rid of the bottle, even though we have this rule where bottles that are nearly empty have to come back to me to go to the great cupboard in the sky where half empty bottles or nearly empty bottles live. So do check out Santal Majuscule. That deserves a place on this list as well. It's a very, very, very interesting way of doing a kind of big rosy sandalwood. Um, but... I like Santal Blanc too. So let's have a spray of this one. Um, which of the three Serge Lutin Santals is your favorite, says Woozy. Do you throw, well, may maybe Magic School, but I do like that this one as well. Um, do you throw away fully empty bottles, says Omar. Depends on the bottle, depends on the bottle. I mean, a lot of the time I do like to keep them and I, and I, but, I but the other thing is as well is I trend not to ever fully empty a bottle. If there's just like a tiny little bit left, you'll see in a moment of something left at the end, then I just kind of think, okay, this needs to be sort of retained um, for reference. Shaheen says, my favorite is Santal Royale from Garla. Ah, interesting. Uh, Jeux de, uh, Jeux de Peau from Serge Lutin says, Gavin is very sandal with, with licorice and currant buns. Totally agree with you. Um, M says, Milky Musk by Parle Moi de Parfum was the first perfume that introduced me to Sandalwood years ago. I loved it so much, I bought backup bottles and sprayed it on my bed and pillows. Ah, Santal Blanc. 
Yeah, see, this is, this I think is the monk who decides that he's going to work in the garden of the monastery. Um, because Lindsay says, I love the older version of Santal Blanc, I love how powdery it is. Yeah, this, I mean, white sandalwood is actually a good name for this because there is something very, very, very sheer about it, very gentle, almost soapy, powdery, um, but it feels quite outdoorsy. So you almost get a sense of maybe kind of gentle florals in bloom, maybe the roses are appearing, maybe we're heading towards summer and it's sweet peas. Um, I'm actually sort of smelling it now and thinking, gosh, is there quite a bit of dihydromersonal in here? But it's 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 well used. Um, <laughs> Gavin says, I'm now thinking of the nuns in Black Narcissus and wondering which sandalwood would, would be Sister Ruth. I haven't seen that. For, I think I talked about Black Narcissus on Radio 4, didn't I? And, and, I, and I, took, I took in a, a, a sample of Narcisse Noir, didn't I? Um, so this is this is this is the kind of yeah this is this is the gardener monk who um, just enjoys spending time with the herbs and the flora and the fauna and doesn't particularly want to go inside and um, you know be doing all of the things whatever whatever it is that monks need to do indoors like I don't know saying their prayers and things like that um, hoping that we'll be swooning to Narcisse Noir before too long says Freddie. Um, Yura says, I like Santal de Misor after trying it once on skin. And Ken says, get your nose on feel oud Santal roots. Matthew says, my first experience of sandalwood of high quality was from a vintage Chanel number no. five extra. Nothing compares. Yeah. So we have done five already. So at this point, I can tell you that you're watching episode 383 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, and we are doing another top 10 rundown, the top 10 best sandalwood perfumes. If you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up to show that you like it. And if you've got any questions, and if you'd like to let me know what your favorite sandalwood perfumes are, please do so. I think we now do our plus one. A lot of you have guessed what this plus one is going to be. Um, this is from 2013. <clears throat> I really, really adore this scent, and it's such a shame that it's been discontinued. It is, of course, the Frederick Mal Dries van Noten collaboration. Dries van Noten from Jag, Gavin guessed it as well, composed by Bruno Jovanovic. <clears throat> I mean, I, I would imagine that the reason why it was discontinued was not because it wasn't selling. I mean, I don't know how it was selling, um, but I think I think it was probably a license issue maybe when the Frederick Mal brand was bought by Estee Lauder, um, they didn't look at kind of keeping the Dries van Noten license going. Dries van Noten, the brand, have got their own perfumes as well, and so maybe they decided they needed to kind of not have a perfume with another brand. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I want a bottle so badly, says Stephanie, I missed out on Dries van Noten, but this is this was a bottle that was bought for me as a Christmas present in the year when the perfume came out uh, by, by Madame Persilace herself, who couldn't believe that I was asking for a perfume as a Christmas present. But I just said, and thank goodness I did say, I said, look, I adore it. I must have it in my collection. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just so beautiful. But it, it, it isn't just a kind of straight up and down um, sandalwood. What makes this one interesting is that officially, apparently, it's got like a kind of speculos feel to it. And, and I don't know about speculos per se, um, although speculos recipes vary, right? Because they all depend on the kind of personal spice blend that you put into it. But absolutely, it's got something buttery, biscuity, vanillic, um, almost like dough-like, and also very definitely spicy, you know, cinnamony, maybe nutmeg-like. Um, and... It's also a little bit like Trai, a beautiful um, journey of ascent because it really, really comes into its own about sort of 45 minutes, an hour after you've sprayed it. And then it is just this most gorgeous haze of sandalwood. Um, and I remember trying it for the first time at Tanagra the perfumery in Nice, the independent perfumery in Nice, well worth visiting if you've never been. Um, it's it's it is it is in town, but you you just need to sort of look it up on a map because it's just a little bit off the beaten track. So you need to know where you're going to find it. And I remember spraying it and initially thinking, oh well, that you know that's quite pleasant. And then walking back to the hotel where we were staying, and 
about sort of half an hour, 45 minutes later, just thinking, oh my goodness, Frederick Mal has really, really done it with this one. This is beautiful and I need to have it in my collection. Um, Speculos equals coffee at the hairdressers for me, says Gavin. Yeah, it probably does for a lot of people. The primary sandalwood scents I have, says City Slacker, are Diptyque Tam Dao and Dunhill Indian sandalwood. I would love a more floral, less woody sandalwood. Sadly, my Gucci Envy bottle only has two mils left. Dries van Noten, Frederick Mal is my holy grail, says Vetti wearer Damio, Sandalo Nobile, Nobile 1942, Indian sandalwood from Dunhill, Santal Insalon from Molinar, uh, Santal du Pacifique from Paris, Monte Carlo, and Piano Santal from Orchestre Parfum. Lots and lots of good recommendations here. Um, the Dior Santal Noir is really good, says Monsieur Leblanc, but can get quite overwhelming if oversprayed. That nearly, nearly, nearly made it onto this list. Um, but this is this is so good, and I think I think what makes it interesting is that that sandalwood still keeps flirting with that butteriness. So who would this be? Now this is interesting. I think this one again. This is a fictional monastery, okay? So these these monks probably would never ever really exist in the real world. Although maybe I don't have to come up with a monk for this one because this isn't actually in the top ten. But this would be this would be the most stylish monk. This would be the monk who would wear his robes or his I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, with, with the most panache. Um, so maybe that means that he's slightly vain and hasn't hasn't um, kind of quite given up um, the vanity that he's probably vowed to give up. But but I just, because to me, this was, this was always the kind of beautiful crumpled white linen suit perfume. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's just heavenly, just heavenly. But we need to get going with the list and we are on number six. And gosh, actually, number six is another big one. And with number six, I'm kind of cheating a little bit, a little bit. Uh, number six is this, which regular viewers will recognize because this has had an outing on this channel before, but you cannot get this in this bottle anymore. So this is, um, this is now, I guess I have to say, vintage, vintage Samsara Eau de Parfum, vintage Samsara EDP, uh, Samsara from Gala, in case you weren't aware, um, came out in 1989 as an extrait composed by Jean-Paul Garlin, but also credited to Gérard Antony. And then I believe in 1990, it came out as an EDP, and it was the first Garlin perfume to actually have the, e have the EDP uh, label. Because <clears throat> in the 80s, as, as a lot of you will know, brands kept toying around with what they wanted to call that concentration between EDT and Parfum. And I think for the longest time, Garlin had gone for... Uh, Parfum de Toilette, uh, I think Dior for a while had Esprit de Parfum, didn't they? I think Chanel had always had Eau de Parfum and then everybody decided to go with Eau de Parfum. Um, so Samsara does smell different now because it doesn't have as much uh, natural sandalwood as it used to. Samsara also famously used a synthetic sandalwood called Polysantol. Um, but I have to say that I think Current Samsara still smells pretty good. Um, and this is a very divisive Garla. Um, this, this, this vintage bottle, by the way, I picked up miraculously at Sharjah Souk in the United Arab Emirates of all places. And you can see this is the box. And the ingredients, the ingredients are alcohol, fragrance, and water. So you can imagine I snapped that up. Um, and Samsara is just very much like Trai. It depends uh, for its effect on the, the combination of the personalities of Jasmine and Sandalwood. Um, but it's just, it's just really, really, really beautiful. Um, and what's fascinating about this, and you know, hats off to Jean-Paul Garlin and Gerard Anthony, is they somehow have managed to make, probably because of the use of the polysantol, but they've managed to make um, the sandalwood here very, very, very recognizably and authentically sandalwoody, and yet it's also huge and radiant and doesn't kind of pull things down, because that's one thing that sandalwood does, right? It makes scents last longer, but it does so by dragging them down, and so one of the tricks you need to be able to do as a perfumer is to still have vibrant and living uh, top notes and an excess of sandalwood can kind of muck that up. Um, but 
but there's no problem with this at all in, in Samsara. Uh, Thierry Vassar has done a good reformulation, says Pradeep. Um, um, oh, and uh, Yura says that we also need to credit somebody called Anne-Marie, is it Saget? According to Michael Edwards. I did not know this. Thank you very much. Samsara is just as much about the vanilla and jasmine for me, says Yura. Yes, yeah. And and you do get almost like a kind of licorice vanillic feel at the end. Absolutely. It's about all of those notes. Um, but it's 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 just jasmine garlands, you know, ja beautiful, beautiful jasmine garlands. And which monk would this be? I don't know. What did I say about Trai? So can this be the, the this analogy? This analogy is kind of letting me down now. Um, might as well stop the list here, says Rachel. I know, I know. Um, um, the sexy monk, says Whimsy Cat. Oh, can we say that? <laughs> I don't know. The, the, okay, this is the poetic monk because samsara isn't samsara the 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 in 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 Sanskrit doesn't it sort of refer to the wheel of life and the circle of the circle of birth and death and rebirth. So, um, let's say that this is the poet monk. This is the one who, the old soul, the old soul poet who maybe actually has been on this earth in different incarnations several times. Um, and yeah, because this has got this has got a truly, truly poetic soul, um, and and I, and I love it. And as I say, I don't uh, with with some so many of these, I don't wear it enough, um, and I don't smell it enough. But I treasure this bottle, and I'm really, really, really lucky that I was able to get hold of it. So that's number six. Number seven. Number seven is the hipster monk. You know where this is going, and this is—I mean, this 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 fragrance gets a, such a bad rep that nowadays. But I, I still I still think it's great. You're going to you're going to guess what it is. Um, oh, Yura says the monk that cross dresses and sometimes turns up to vespers wearing lipstick. I like that too, actually. I like that too. That's a good image. We'll go with that one. Having watched having watched Paris is Burning last night for the first time ever, I could not believe that I hadn't seen it before, and I absolutely loved it. For those of you based in the UK, it's on iPlayer. It's on BBC iPlayer. Do watch it. Or we will go with the with the with the lipstick wearing monk, um, or the IT monk says Rachel. Maybe. Anyway, uh, this is this is the hipster monk um, from 2011. Again, composed by Frank Volkel. This is of course Le Labo Santal 33. I I think this is really good. Oh, I love seeing because you know on the Le Labo labels it tells you when it was bottled, and I got this. On the 30th of June, 2012. Gosh. And I asked for it to be made out to Persilaise. And it was compounded in London by Gianluca. Thank you, Gianluca. Um, so I actually need to get another Santal 33 because, look, I've got very, very, very little lift in, left in here. I mean, tiny, tiny, tiny amount. But it's the it's the, um, the Labo prices that put me off. I mean... You know, I think I think going back to 2012, these were like semi-affordable, but they're almost prohibitive now. Um, this is the monk, says Gavin, who's always asking when the monastery will be getting Wi-Fi. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. No, absolutely. This is the monk who sort of, yes, this is the monk who says, yeah, I get it, we're monks, but why can't we have an Instagram account? <laughs> you know, we could do like hashtag monk. <laughs> Hashtag spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're absolutely right. I like this one. I like this one. Um, unfortunately, my partner thinks Santal 33 smells like pickles, says Nisim. No, the, 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 it's, you're absolutely right. To me, to me, this smells of cooked steamed dill, especially if you're doing the kind of Iranian green rice, um, like sabzi polo, that kind of thing, where you put in a lot of deal, dill and the heat and this, this, this combined with the scent, scent of the rice creates a very, very, very particular effect. I remember, um, <clears throat> I remember uh, wearing this to work once, and uh, a, a colleague, um, she she hasn't been a colleague for a while. Um, she sort of turned around and said, "Has somebody been eating dill?" And I thought, "Oh my goodness, she's absolutely right." And I'd never, never realised the connection between between Santal Thirty Three. Um, I love Santal Thirty Three. Says uh, L R. It smells like the greatest old book in the world to me. And Orash says, Samzi Polo is my childhood. But hopefully not just your childhood, right? Hopefully you get to see some now as well. 
And the only two Lalabos that are worth it at current prices are Patchouli24 and Elang49, says Woozy. And Elang, which I love, is, is also by Frank Volker, and, and Patchouli is great as well. Um, so this is this is this is yeah this is the Wi-Fi begging the Wi-Fi pleading monk, but we should talk a little bit more about the scent. So this is actually again a woody sandalwood, more kind of akin to the Villaresi. Um, it's it 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 is apparently based more on the Australian Santalum spicatum than the album, uh, and so it's got a kind of rougher edge to it. You can see why it was appropriated by the hipsters when it was. Um, this has got a kind of, you need that sort of coffee buzz in the morning type feel to it. Um, I think um, Lalabo did a whole kind of Texan cowboy story out of it. But to me, it's also always just made me think of Mumbai and walking down like the Colaba Causeway. Um, but it's, it's, it's that kind of smokiness to it that's really, really intriguing. The pickled monk, says Yura, okay? Um, Amonio says, I think Lalabo has done some wonderful things with their musky woody base that seemingly stands the test of time. Shout out to Oud27. Okay, we have got three to go. Is that right? Yes. Yes, there are three in front of me here, which means that we are on number eight. And number eight, I allowed myself in this video to have more than one cent per brand. And there are two brands that are going to be represented twice. So at number eight, we have one that a lot of you have mentioned already. Um, this is the Jester Monk. I think this is the Fruity Monk. Um, from 1990, this is Egoist, of course, from Chanel, composed by Jacques Polge, and apparently Francois Demachy as well. Um, oh, there we go. I really, really like Egoist. And I like the fact that um, Chanel, a few years ago, kind of pushed it and made it a, a, a more prominent presence in their range. For the longest time, you couldn't even get it in the UK. But now I think it's in every um, in every boutique. I went to the uh, Chanel boutique at Battersea Power Station the other day, and I was very, very pleased to see Egoist there, and also very pleased to see Pour Monsieur EDT and EDP. Um, Egoist is the martial arts monk, says Gavin. Why? Okay, I don't get that. You need to you need to tell me that. Uh, Mika says, loved the ad campaign for Egoist. Oh, the original ad. The original ad is one of the best perfume ads of all time. If you haven't seen the original advert, you need to go on YouTube. You need to look for Chanel Egoist um, original advert. And if it's got the music, if it's got the Montagues and the Capulets playing, then you know you're watching the correct one. It is just a genius ad. Um, right, let's do some rearranging here now for my my perfume still life. Let's pop these folks down here. I always, always tell myself that I need to take a picture of this arrangement, and then I never remember to take a picture. Sharon says, Egoist was my go-to perfume in the 90s. Um, Egoist, says Yura, is the monk that should never have been a monk, but just got into it. He drinks, smokes, likes a dark joke, and is actually an atheist. Well, I was kind of going for comedian monk, but we'll go with this one as well. But I don't understand why he, why is he the Kung Fu monk? Somebody needs to tell me why, because Rachel agrees as well. So this is, this is a really, really interesting um, take on sandalwood because, um, because, because it's baked, it's baked apples, it's baked fruit and, and uh, apples and pears and maybe again, raisins and sultanas in there. Um, <clears throat> so it's almost like a sort of presaging, uh, Dior on, you know, with that which was which was baked apples, baked fruit with iris. This is a similar kind of structure, but with um, but but as I say, with the sandalwood. Pradeep says egoist is before becoming a monk. Okay, space dance says I get tobacco, lots of it. Yes, absolutely. Things like hay, tobacco, those sorts of effects are in there. Um, but that sandal sandalwood does work, and it's also candied fruit. I think there is a real sweetness to it. So this is the candy monk. This is the monk who has a cameo in the new Barbie movie, which I'm very interested in watching, by the way. Um, a big rose, too, says Pradeep. Yes, uh, uh, agree with all of that. So this is the, the, the multicolored comedian, candy monk, who maybe does sort of part-time stints in this monastery, and then on a Saturday goes to the local comedy club and does a set um, and, and tells all sorts of really hilarious jokes about, about monks. Top 10 Barbie scents, says Lindsay. <laughs> Now, what on earth would they be? 
that may not be a bad video for me to do actually with the film coming up top top 10 barbie sense and then top 10 oppenheimer atomic bomb sense how about that how about that for a really really politically incorrect double bill then oppenheimer says yuri yeah yes yeah no maybe maybe not maybe not um Egoist, again, not so keen on the platinum, on the flanker, but original is really, really good. Um, Kayali's wedding perfume, says Rima, the black one is a very nice sandalwood, very unisex uh, leaning sweet. Um, okay, thank you very much. Barbie scent, says Rachel, but what would they, as in scents for Barbie? I ha I'd have to do like five for Barbie and maybe five for Ken. Um, gosh, what on earth would they be? <laughs> Let me concentrate one thing at a time. And at number nine, we have got Again, a brand that we have had before. Uh, this is Nile Vermeer, uh, who uses sandalwood very, very well in her compositions. Um, but this from 2013 is her Ashoka. And Ashoka is is interesting because there is a there is a comparison between it and the one that we started with, with Santal Masoya, because Ashoka also uses uh, a fig note to marry up with its sandalwood base. Um, Ken definitely wears Aventus, says Euro. I do not want to imagine Ryan Gosling in Aventus, thank you very much. Um, what on earth would your inner Ken be? Stop diverting me. Um, isn't Ashoka figgy leather, says Gavin? Yes, it is. It's figgy iris, but I think it's got a really, really great meditative sandalwood base. Um, and again, like Trae, the scent takes you on a journey. Just wore this the other day, says Whimsy Cat. Isn't, isn't it wonderful? Ah, oh, I did really, really, really great. And so this, this monk, this monk's really, really obvious. This monk is easy. This is the monk who actually, before he joined the monastery, was 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 a warmonger, was a fighter. Maybe he was in the Marines. I don't know. Maybe he was some kind of. Maybe he was a mercenary. Yeah, let's really go for it. He was a mercenary, and then one day he sees the error of his ways, and actually he is now the world's most devout pacifist, and wouldn't hurt a fly, and doesn't even want to tread on. So maybe he's a Jane monk. Yeah, he, he would have to be a Jane. Um, it is it is Janes, isn't it, who are very, very careful about where they walk so that they don't, like, kill any insects or anything like that. Ex-Gestapo monk, you're a, yes, ex-Gestapo now turned Jane. Yeah, there's a novel in that somewhere, isn't there? Um, <clears throat> it has a desiccated coconut element, says Gavin, the perfume, not the Gestapo. Um, yeah, all of those sorts of things. It, it's almost like the kind of the, the less patisserie, but still kind of equally foody version of, of tri. Um, so coconut, fig, leather, iris, and something something really radiant coming through as well. The the fig is, is really, really quite green. And then at the base, the base, the base is, is the beautiful sandalwood. Jonathan says, Neela Vermeer has one of the best collections out there, in my opinion. Show-stopping stuff. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree. I mean, you know, all, all of her um, perfumes are absolutely... If you haven't tried her work, try and get yourself a, a sample. I don't know whether I said that this is also by Bertrand du Chauffour, but it is. And on this whistle stop tour, we have nearly made it. We have made it to number 10, but you all know what the number 10 is. Regular viewers, I think, guessed straight away and check this out. This is what we're down to. This is what we're down to in my original bottle. I do have a backup bottle. And I think actually I need to open the backup because I, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping myself from wearing this because there's hardly left in here. Uh, so this is from 2011 again from that vintage year for Sandalwoods by Jan Vanier. This is, of course, Tom Ford, Santal Blush. Um, what a fabulous list, says Rachel. Now I need to find that DVN. Oh, you do, Rachel. You do, Rachel. I'll tell you what, if we can somehow figure out how we would do it, I'll try and send you a few, a few drops of this one. Uh, so let me label this. I'm going to be really, really stingy with this spray, if you don't mind. I've talked about this scent many, many times before on this channel. Shall we pop that there? Can you see that? Yes. So let's just move the Chanel along so that it can be seen. Can we see pretty much every single one? I think we can now. Not looking too bad. Okay. Kind of. Yeah, leave it at that. Tom Ford are cosplaying monks for Halloween, not real monks, says Rachel. Okay. <laughs> you go with that image if you like. Um, but I actually think, I actually think Santal Blush is the oldest and wisest monk 
in the monastery. He's an he is he is an ex head of the monastery. Now this is this is where the analogy falls apart, okay? Because the Dalai Lama, as far as I know, is the Dalai Lama for life, and he only stops being a Dalai Lama um, when he passes away. But in other sorts of monasteries and also in convents, whoever is in charge, so you know the equivalent of like the Mother Superior, except I don't think they're even called that now in convents. I think they're called team leaders in the UK, which is just awful. That's a position that is not held permanently, and the role. Um, is, is is sort of passed around. But to me, Santal Blush is somebody who maybe was in charge, maybe was the Dalai Lama, maybe, maybe this is maybe this is the, the, the monk in the afterlife that is about to come back and be reincarnated as somebody else or something else. This is Pope Benedict, says Gavin. No. <laughs> monk Emeritus, says Lama. <laughs> oh, I need to do these sorts of videos more often. You're very, very good for me with the, with the way you make me laugh. But no, 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 no. I do not want to picture Pope Benedict when I um when I wear Santal blush. I want to picture somebody I'd rather picture Yoda. Uh, Yoda, you know, as he sort of moved on in, into the force. Um, it, it, it again takes that kind of smokier, spikier uh, um, personality of Santalum um, Spicatum, the Australian variety. But um, it, it, it makes it gentle. It makes it really very convincingly sandalwoody. It's, it's just perfect because it is creamy and milky and tender and delicate, but it has personality, it has oomph, and it has got a kind of rosy tint to it as well. Um I need to I need to break open the the the, the backup bottle. And I'm also very, very, very worried about smelling um the current iteration because of course it's been re-released and it's in that darker bottle together with Eben Fumé, of which I'm not a huge fan, and I just hope it hasn't been messed around with because I think, I, I, I think it's 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 one of the best. Well, I probably actually think it's the best Tom Ford perfume ever. Probably my favorite private blend overall, says Woozy. Yeah, mine as well. And yeah, time to mask up. Says Santal Blush is in a new colored bottle, brown cap and label, kind of ugly. I think they, it, it's to do with them. Um, it was something to do with wood. So I think Bois Marocain is in that collection, and as I say, Eben Fumé as well. Um, so we are done and i can't believe we made this in under an hour um thank you very much for watching thank you very much for the laughs thank you very much for the wit tomorrow so tomorrow is the 3rd of july because tomorrow doesn't mean anything if you're not watching live um at 5 p.m uk time i will be interviewing nicola pozzani the creative director of merchant of venice so do come along to that he is a very very interesting character indeed and I know it will be difficult to talk about just Merchant of Venice because he knows tons and tons about the industry and has got a lot of experience in it. So um, I'm sure it'll be a good interview. But until then, be good. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much for all of the comments. And I will see you soon. Bye now.